uh, hurricanes or what have you come right up the same street almost, right? Just a little while ago. Yeah. Right there, all that Baton Rouge, New Orleans, Lake Charles area, here they come. The hurricanes in Florida, all of that stuff, well, is this, the water is hotter. Yeah, it's hotter because it's global warming. You ever heard of that? That means we have to get busy because the people who are gaining money from this is not us. Only the people at the top are gaining a few dollars. So the new world that we're living in or we want to develop may have more be maybe a more cooperative type society than a monetary society. You know, money loses uh, Money was something at first because you could trade, uh, you know. Capitalism had some benefits for a while, but it don't have no benefits now. When all the money just go up to four or five people at the top. Concentration of wealth, concentration of resources. That's the monster we have to fight. That's the thing that we have to deal with on the earth that we're living on. And it's our responsibility because those super rich, I don't believe they're going to do it. Now, we mentioned a few things I'll mention and then I'll Sabbihisma Rabbi Kal'ala. And this is uh, Rab conveys not only the idea of fostering or bringing up or nourishing but also that of regulating, completing, and accomplishing. Of evolution of a thing from its crudest state to its highest perfection. Now I'm talking about the human being, but the earth went through that process too. You know, the earth evolved over millions and billions of years to become what it is now. And Allah, Rabbil Alameen, is that reality that created us, that nourishes us all along the way until we evolve. We're talking this today, we're thinking this today, and other people are thinking of it because they're going through a process of evolution and being nourished until they r reach a level of excellence. That means technically uh, the excellence of technology and also spiritual excellence that would demand that they use that technology properly, right? That takes a spiritual evolution. And so Rabbil Alameen, Lord of the Worlds, means that that's Allah that created us and nourished us all the way and technically gave us an assignment. See, Rab, uh, like Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim all of those characteristics and attributes mean that you have been assigned. You have been assigned to this job. Because Allah knew this was going to happen because Allah knows everything. See, the past for me and you is one thing. The present is one thing. But the future is another. For Allah, the past, the present, and the future is all the same. <laughs> right? Let me go over that again. For Allah, there is no past. Because Allah created time, so it wasn't. Just think about it. And there's no future. For Allah, everything is now. Everything is now. So Allah created us 
and carried us along from our past in our present for us to recognize and understand what our assignment is, what our mission is, like whether we accept our mission, whether we accept our assignment, right? Whether we do our assignment, whether we complete our assignment, right? And how well we handle that assignment. Allah knows what we're going to do, but Allah gave it to us. Now, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. We don't know how we're going to do. That's part of, uh, it's a man that's cold. If Allah know everything we're going to do and, and gave us a destiny, Allah gave you the ability to make decisions. You're rewarded a punishment with heaven or hell based on the decisions that you make, right? So Allah ain't condemned nobody to nothing. But Allah knows what we're going to do because Allah knows everything. That's what Carter me. Allah knows what you're going to do. So you might as well, it's laid out for you. Well, Allah, give me that assignment. He, he didn't demand you follow that assignment. You just got it. You got the ability. You got the technical know-how. You have the backup. You have all the support systems. Will you do it? That's the only question. Let me see. Uh, so that's our assignment. So takdir, it means to assign a particular role to everything, whether quantitatively or qualitatively. We therefore notice that every object is bound both in the outward and the inward aspect by conditions warranted or fixed by its very nature and that this condition or these conditions, are in perfect consonance with the variegated demands of its growth and development. And you hear that over and over again. Evolution, growth, development, increase. So we have to visualize ourselves and see ourselves shaping, forming, and fashioning, and evolving this new world that we want to live in. That means that you can think up the world you want to live in and fix it. That way, look how slow the human being is, how fast he is to go to war and how slow he is to move toward peace. Well, it's because the shaitan got hold to him, right? That's, remember, that's the main enemy. We just never forget that is our main enemy. The devil, you don't hear people talk about the devil much anymore, right? And they don't talk about all of these disasters and all these viruses going around. You don't hear people talk publicly about the devil hardly anymore, right? Oh, it's this, it's that they give it a scientific, uh, but we got a different uh, book here. It tells us who the problem is, and I'll close, or move toward a close with, and the devil will be, will, on the day of judgment, the devil will say, when the matter is decided, surely Allah promised you a promise of truth. I promised you, and I failed you. I had no authority over you, except that I called you and you obeyed me. So blame me not, but blame yourself. I cannot come to your help, nor can you come to my help. I deny your act of associating me with Allah. Surely for the unjust is a painful chastisement. So that's Shaitan's story. You know that old, the devil made me do it. When you do that on the day of judgment, the devil... Shaitan gonna jump up and say, hold it, hold it, hold it. I the devil. You got that book and everything telling you. On, when the matter is decided, Allah gave you the truth. Allah promised you a promise of truth. I lied to you. What do I do? Deception and lying. That's my business. It's a business I'm in. Right? Me and my whole organization. 
That's what we do. We trick people, we lie to them, we steal, we create, create wars and great injustices. That's what we do, right? That's what the shaitan is saying. When the matter is decided, surely Allah promised you a promise of truth. But I lied to you, I deceived you. But I didn't have no authority over you except I whistled and you came a running. I called you and you obeyed. So don't blame me. The devil made me do it. Don't blame me. Blame yourself. And I deny, the, I deny your act of associating. The word here is, is shirk. I deny your act of shirk associating me with Allah. Surely for the unjust is a painful chastisement. So the shaitan know where his end is. He going to tell, hey man, you did that wrong? You ought to be shaming yourself. And Allah gave you this whole book for you to, to guide you and gave you hidayah and lead you and showed you the way. Right? Okay. Now, the last thing I want to mention is this. Masjid al-Islam and Sabakun Liberation Movement. Now, we've all talked about Sabak, Sabakun, those are those who go out first, right? Those who anticipate the things that are going to happen in society. They go and get active and change or improve the situation before anybody else may know about it or before anybody may do anything about it. So that's, we pray that uh, there's less extinctions in the earth. So plants, animals, everything is being extinct. Some frogs are almost extinct, you know, because of all the chemicals and the pollution. And, you know, I remember about 30 years ago, I was reading about uh, the bullfrogs. I don't know if y'all remember bullfrogs or frog legs. You know, in the country, you hear them big old brule frogs all the time in the bayous and everywhere. So in Pakistan, they would have these fields full of rice and everything, and you know it has water in it, and the bullfrogs would be out there getting down, making all that noise. And then in Europe, they developed a taste for frog legs. Now, we used to eat frog legs, you know, in the country. So the Pakistanis start cutting the frog legs up, cutting the frog, just all they wanted was the frog legs and pack them on ice and send them to Europe. Pretty soon they had to buy the most insane uh, plant killer, weed killer, to do what? To eat up the pl each bullfrog used to eat about a pound of uh, insects a day, so they didn't eat no insect stuff. So the dummies for money, you know, started cutting the frogs up, packing them on ice, and sent them to Europe. And after that, they had to buy the insect repellent to kill all the other insects. Remember, they're gonna kill all the other insects too. That's why things are going extinct so fast. Then it goes into the, to the soil and it kills the microbes, the microorganisms down there. They flow in the stream and the whole natural imbalance is thrown off. The whole natural imbalance is thrown off. So we just wanted to get together for a little while today and we wanted to know, does anybody I have any questions or comments? Any questions or comments? No questions, no comments?
<laughs> right, right. Right. Basically, that's what it is. Right. And one of the things that came to my attention was they mentioned that this is a declaration of independence for black people. Now, anybody who's listened to our program would know that that's something that you said. Right. Uh, oh, yeah. Years ago. Right. Right. We're not talking about climate change. Not that you know, right. I'm going to kind of go and read it, but based on the conversation, it's more of an economic plan. Right. right. So can you talk about you know how that would uh, okay into this? Uh, and this centered around uh, okay if you remember in 1968 Martin Luther King went to Chicago. And that was, he went there to, that's what he went there, uh, for an economic program to, you know, to get people working together, to spend their money together, to cycle the money around, and okay. Now, you never read about it, but the only program that, like that that worked was East Oakland Enterprises in Oakland. It was two main groups in Oakland. It was the Black Panther Party and it was us. Of course, we ain't intermingled a lot. But our program, East Oakland Enterprises, the goal was to do just what we did. We cycled the money, like in the Jewish community, they say money circulates 11 times before it go out. In the black community, money come in on the first and the 15th, right? And by the 3rd and by the 17th, the money is gone. It don't circulate. And the Chinese, the Koreans, and uh, the dope man, the liquor store man, all those people get the money. But it does not circulate in the black community. In those days of black independence and black liberation, to solve black people's problems would have been a big step toward the, the human humanities movement, you know, the human potential movement. But right now, if you solve black people's problem, you'd still drown next week, right? If you solve any group of people's problem, it would not serve the earth problem. So I believe that we ought to cut out all the steps and go directly to making this world a better place. Making this place a good place. And that's all what utopia means, a good place. It don't mean heaven or paradise on earth. I mean, it means a good place. So if we could make a place where it's 80, 90% good, that would be great. That would be great. Where most of the people are fed, you know, that would be a good place. Where most people have the health and the facilities they need, that would be a good place. Right? So those programs that they're talking about on television and everything are decades behind. And that's the problem with, with the world is they're always running behind schedule. Their technology is running way ahead, but they, they're not allowing uh, psychology or sociology or anything or spirituality control their technology it's all about money. So that means we, however we can use this technology to get the most money, that's who's going to win. With that in mind, we'll always be a day late and a dollar short. Uh, I'll give you an example that we know about. You know when we'd have fundraisers here before, Brother Mahmoud Abdul Rauf would come and what have you. 
and 